Uh, what I've really realized is that, like, there there is no going back to normal. I think that's obvious. That's, it would be undialectical to imagine otherwise. Like, there is no post-pandemic that's, like, just like it was before. But I think these last couple months, especially as vaccinations in the U.S. have, have increased, has really reminded me is that there will whatever is coming after, like this stage, is going to be a intensification of the uh, ambiguous uh, uh, sort of desocializing. Uh, uh, like I think I, I worry that uh, that there will be a permanent uh, mark left in our ability to to engage with the world. I don't know. Once again, I just feel very siloed and very unsure of what anybody uh, is is thinking or is, is going to do. I do know that, that whatever I think I or anybody else was hoping for, uh, which is some sort of cathartic moment of reasserted uh, uh, conviviality and and uh i don't think i don't know we'll see if it comes it'll come slowly like like uh like a uh, feeling coming back to a limb that's been sat on for too long uh but i think the ambiguity of it at the moment is getting to me a little bit just this not knowing where it's going to land and how long like we're a pl like we're on a plinko board moving through space. Yeah, you can't really get more of a uh, sobering, uh, dis ex ex sobering, uh, a sobering model example of what the rolling catastrophe of the 21st century will be from then this distinction between the U.S. and places like India right now, where you're getting to things opening up here, you're getting to uh, a flattening finally of the curve uh, and some sort of tentative reopening. Meanwhile, what, there are th thousands of pe hundreds of thousands of people a day uh, in India? And I think that that is something that a lot of Americans who worry about climate change uh, tend not to focus on. There's that, and I think that's why people like to think in apocalyptic terms about climate change. They like to imagine, hey, we're all going to die. You know? But I think we're seeing with this, that's not really the case. You know? Some of us will die, uh, but the majority of us are going to stay in the pool, you know, in the human pool, in the citizenship realm, where you get all the privileges of being an American. Uh, and elsewhere, huge numbers of people will die. And we will be separated from them by distance and by walls that we'll build and by technology that we'll use to enforce it. And I don't think that is something that a lot of, uh, I think what people who fixate in America about we're all going to die, I think why that's a wish. Like somebody once said, uh, uh, of course people like Dr. Strangelove, who couldn't like a movie with such a happy ending? And it talks to the, the that, that, that desire for instant annihilation not slow decline. And I think that is really the, the death drive as we understand it. Like Howard Ratner in, in um, Uncut Gems, subconsciously setting up his own death so that he can die at his high point rather than uh, to see all that he enjoys and all that he values about himself slowly uh, removed and nothing but death to be company. Uh, I think a lot of people... They take, especially if you're on the left, self-consciously on the left, we take our idea, the idea that we're good people seriously. We take the idea that we do the right thing seriously. We, we take the idea that if we were in some other more 
vital historical moment, like Nazi Germany or antebellum America, we would be on the side of right. We would be so Sophie Scholl or John Brown. And we can, pre uh, we can pretend to ourselves now in the situation that we live in that we're not really quite in that situation and that what we're doing in our lives to ex ex exhibit a political perspective and to exercise political uh, uh, political subjectivity are all, if not as most as much as we can do, enough to validate ourselves. The future that we're all really headed towards, and f for the most part, afraid to even name, is one where most of us are going to stay in the bubble. Not all of us. But the thing is, say some chunk of America gets like wiped out by a, uh, by uh, a natural disaster, and the people who were in there in that zone were up until that moment part of America. Once that happens, they're no longer there. I mean, if they die, obviously they're off the books. But if they're on the other side of the uh, border that we struck create other side of the of the tent cities that we build they are now off the books consciously too because their contribution to our understanding of uh the american people uh will be eliminated so most of us are going to, or our descendants or whatever are going to be in the bubble which means we're going to be watching through the bubble the rest of the world slowly microwave for our benefit. And that is going to mean we're going to be in the moral position that we imagine about the past where we would have did the right thing. And I think a lot of us understand at some level that even if that's happening, even if we live in that world, by the time it happens, we will have accommodated enough, we will have created enough mental uh, baffles and justifications and rituals of purification to uh, imagine that whatever poultry ritualized pseudo-politics that we've landed on is sufficient to the horror of the moment. I know that's true of me. Once again, everything I say is just me. I don't know. Maybe that's not true of anybody, everybody else. But certainly makes it it certainly seems like it'll be the case